Commonwealth Fusion Systems, Massachusetts Institute of Technology, Plasma Science and Fusion Center. They completed a successful test of a very powerful magnet that could be used to contain a gas plasma at high enough temperature that it could be used to make a functioning, useful fusion power plant, a tokamak magnetic confinement system that actually does the job and lets you get more energy out of a fusion reactor than you put in. But they haven't tested it to do that, and they don't know it'll work or not. I'm not wasting 15 minutes of your life like every other YouTube channel does. I mean, I'm notorious for wasting your time, but I didn't. In one minute, you've heard the entire story. That's it. One component. This is like having another story that a specific type of material, I'll link to that, I guess I'll do the rest of the video on it, may make solar panels much more efficient. That's it. it I, no dreams, no bullshit, no, you know, Mr. Fusion on the top of your house equivalents here. Just a better solar cell. Will it be as long-lasting? Will it damage the environment because it uses some weird compound that is generated as sludge that kills off your cat? We don't know yet. Fusion, if you're not aware of it, has been promised to be 30 years away for a very long time. That's why I never listen to someone promising fusion. It's like saying thorium reactor. Well, it's a magic wand. No, because they have other problems. They don't get rid of them. They make different ones, including making almost the same or worse material than a standard fission plant. Yes, someone will argue with me about that, but that's not true. The fact is, there is no free lunch. But a fusion power plant, if it had a better magnet would be more likely to happen in the mythical perpetual 30 years away every year. We'll never achieve it. Donut-shaped fusion machine, Tokamak. These magnets will be able to achieve net energy, more energy out than you put in. Break-even is where it sustains itself, where you can test how stable it is. You start it up. It runs, and then you sit back and wait for it to exhaust itself for the amount of material put in because you need it to sustain itself bare minimum to determine how much material you need to put in. A gram of matter put into a tokamak reactor, could be deuterium or whatever, um, will last X number of days or whatever, producing heat energy that would be used to just boil water in a steam engine, steam turbine. Uh, that's really it. They didn't achieve some breakthrough. They just improved a magnet to contain a gas plasma. This could be used for hundreds of other things. But the story goes, Fusion gets closer with a successful test of new kind of magnet. And the other one, exploring why this nuclear fusion breakthrough matters. And making... Uh, a piece of metal with a controlled carbon content is a breakthrough. No joke, but it's still, it's just a chunk of steel. Now let's talk about the other one. Uh, Periviscite structure. Material with a crystal structure similar to a mineral called periviscite. Uh, calcium titanium, titanium oxide mineral. Anyway, consists of calcium titanium oxide. The mineral was first discovered in the Ural Mountains in Russia by somebody in 1800s, named after a mineralog mineralogist from that time period, or before it. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Anyway, what can it be used for? It can be used to make uh, solar cells. Uh, photoelectrolysis, light emitting diodes, lasers, photovoltaics, etc., and the solar cell link I'm going to give you in the video. And I'm literally just reading this off of the Wikipedia page that's been around for X number of weeks, whatever. They make it out of all sorts of stuff. And it is more efficient. And it could make silicon-based tandem cells in... Excuse me. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Uh, blah, 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 blah. It would make it more efficient. By how much? Um... Well, it doesn't matter. It just makes it better. But aren't you supposed to quote percentages? No, I'm not in the mood. I have been disappointed by a, like, 
like a lot of you have, every time someone says we'll be in flying cars by 2020, we weren't. Uh, we have autonomous driving cars. We have voice-activated everything. Quink and Inkly, that's actually much more difficult than other things that were predicted. We live in the future, literally. And we're not happy with it. Other things I learned today. Today I found out. Let's just do a variation on that. Um, the majority of plastic that's dropped into the environment that can cause damage by choking birds' guts or causing your fish to suddenly smell like burnt plastic when you're cooking them after you've gone fishing. That's a real problem, by the way. Um, the majority of the plastic lost in the ocean doesn't just collect in ocean-going uh, islands of garbage. Uh, it comes out as microplastics primarily and stuff on your beach. Uh, the majority of the material is really close. It's not so far away that you can say, oh, that's too hard to get. Meanwhile, uh, a group of people have come up with various methods to harvest all the garbage off the ocean surface, because we can reach that, and then to start recycling it. And, of course, everyone points out, stop throwing it into the ocean in the first place. Now, this is all the stuff as of uh, 9 a.m. this morning, since 6, that I've looked up. So let's review. None of these are breakthroughs. They're hard-won incremental improvements and changes in one thing or another. Uh, make better conductors. Uh, make more efficient batteries. Uh, uh, make your solar panels just a couple of percentage points or maybe 10 percentage points better as far as energy uh, uh, um, collection. And, of course, that's tempered with understanding that the more you change things, the less you're able to deal with the negative aspects of it. If you do a thorium reactor, you have to deal with a completely different type of nasty waste. The way we deal with leftover material fuel rods is horrible because we know what we're supposed to do with it and we don't do it. Having it standing in casks near the nuclear plant just being a toxic shit dump isn't fixing it any more than throwing it in the ocean having it land at the bottom and still poison the planet. We as a species avoid, like, literally the plague. Oh, wait a minute. We, nobody avoids the plague. Remember the last year or so where you watched everyone embrace it because politics? We avoid absolutely doing the right thing, even though it's clear, obvious, and easy. I mean, I'm not kidding. In the early stages for nuclear power plants, disposal of the material, ignoring all regulations and disposing of it correctly by finding petered out mines and just put it reverse mining it, putting it back into the ground somewhere, would have been a million times better than what we did with it. In fact, literally going out of your way to toxify the surface world in the oceans and rivers seems to have been an absolute attempt at sabotaging humanity, and i, I, I got to wonder about it. No, really, it would have been just as easy to take it to a shaft mine, bring it down there with our shitty health laws that we had at the time, and bury the petered-out material, the, the depleted uranium or waste material, and dump it out. Really would have. And yeah, thorium reactors will be just as bad because they'll have a completely different group of problems. No, no, you're not... No, you're not doing the old mistakes, you're making all new ones. And, again, with solar cells, depending on how you make them, you make a toxic mess, or they consume so much energy they're not worth it in the long term, or you do it in such a way that your break-even point is sooner, and you get more energy out of them that way, and it's just silicon. Oh, and then we have the microchip problem right now, where we have to find alternatives to the way we've been making microchips, because... Nuclear, are, are not the nuclear plant, excuse me, the microchip plants are shutting down all over the planet for some reason. And then Windows 11 comes along and makes it harder to run the computer entirely for no good reason. I'm feeling angsty today, obviously. But anyway, <clears throat> the stories of the day, the magnetic fusion milestone, no, it's a mile marker on a highway that you're still building, and it's cross-country. No, no. It's transcontinental. Stop saying it's 30 years away and stop, and just say, we've improved a magnet today. That's good enough. There's no way anybody's going to have a bad taste in the mouth finding out you made another high-tech, high-powered magnet. 
Yes, it's for a fusion generator that won't work. No, it won't work in any period of time. Well, we're predicting by, if you set a prediction date, you're scheduling the date you're stupid looking. You're scheduling when you fail. Let's set goals based on a time and date stamp. Put it on a calendar so we know which day to anti-celebrate our failure, right? And then uh, somebody's going to inevitably, well, if you don't set goals, I set goals. I don't put a timetable on them because timetables don't work. So let's review my anti, I, 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 I'm in a bad mood. Fusion reactors are not right around the corner, but they improve the way super magnets work. Number one. Number two. No, thorium isn't the answer. And that includes the Bill Gates version of it for the material, the one that would burn off the waste material inefficiently, but at least end up with less nasty stuff out of your radioactive waste. It would be less dangerous. How about just disposing of it the way we know we should have? I mean, you have a bunch of mines, and yeah, next part, we have for decades known that if you just go to a mine shaft that collects water and puts crap into the land, if you just filled it up with and then cemented shut, literal cement, you would eliminate 99% of the raw factor from the uh, shaft mine. You'd get rid of the uranium waste material, and you wouldn't be dealing with it now. You wouldn't have hundreds of tons sitting around somewhere waiting to be turned into a dirty bomb. It would be literally buried in solid rock underground above the water table, if you want, for the period of time probably that it would be dangerous, ten to 20,000 years. And yes, solar cells got a boost by having an improvement, by using yet another material. And that will either have unintended negative consequences or it'll be better. And yes, cleaning up the ocean going garbage is one thing, but literally just going out to your uh, local uh, seaside resort area and the areas people don't look at and picking up the garbage and throwing it away when someone else didn't, yeah, that's not so glamorous, but it works better. And yes, cleaning up the oceans can be done and can be used to recycle the material and even make it pseudo-profitable. But the main thing is, it's not money. It's you don't want to be eating a fish 10 years from now that's got microplastic in it because you don't. Because it will have it in there. Okay, that's me bitching for the day. I'll leave links to some of the stuff. I'm in a nasty mood. Fusion gets closer with successful test of new kind of magnet and MIT startup backed by yada yada. And then they put his name in it, Bill Gates. So now you're going to cause people to trigger on Bill Gates, have a conspiracy theory attitude about it. It's going to get shit press, and it will be a failed promise. Fusion gets closer. No. MIT successful startup tests new kind of magnet. Well, what about Bill Gates? Bill Gates should not should from now on set up an LLC every time he wants to do one of these projects, not admit he's part of it, and donate. Don't let him just say, I am Bill Gates, I don't need to be more famous. I don't need to buy my way into heaven anymore. I am really getting tired of hearing about it. But none of these are breakthroughs. They're incremental. The light bulb is not a miraculous invention. Thomas Alva Edison and his light bulb. Well, he perfected from a hundred different versions other people did, and more importantly, he tested out thousands of materials. Brute force, what material works under what conditions. Do you put a gas in it or not? It's actually a neutral gas at a low pressure, not really a vacuum if you didn't know that about your light bulbs you used to have. And yeah, Tesla effectively came up with a fluorescent light, and it was more efficient, and blah, blah, blah. No one cares. Thanks for watching. Have a good day. Good luck with that. That's today's rant.